Okay, so I haven't done a video in a few days now. Um, this has mainly been just school. I've been working on ICBM stuff, video games, space engineers, etc. But uh, today I have a small video to show off the antenna network. Now it's not completed yet. I still have uh, some model work to do here. I, I've got to get my texture guys to give me some textures here. Uh, the plan is to uh, kind of make these notches look a little better, make the base have some LED lights on it. Definitely make the pike look uh, a lot nicer. Basically it's like a lightning antenna thing. I, I don't really know what it is. The modeler had some fun with it. But the, uh, the system's pretty easy. It's dynamic, so this antenna, the shape of the antenna actually doesn't matter whatsoever. Um, but there is some set conditions in order to make the antenna's range go up. Uh, and this default uh, range here, I think it's got a range of like 500 meters. Um, it doesn't take much. The range is calculated. Um, you get a bonus percentage for every block above Y64. Y64 and below is considered underground and you get a negative penalty instead of a positive penalty. Um, but you can gain a thousand additional meters range for the Y level of the, the tower. So simply just placing one block at 255 at the top of the map, you'll gain a thousand meters. You then in additionally can gain an, an additional thousand meters for the height of the antenna and then 90 meters per block you attach to the side here. As you notice, when you place this, this changes. Now I'm, I'm gonna go over um, the building really quick here. Now you have to have a base. The base is the logic controller. It holds on to all the data. The antennas are the multi-block parts. They act sort of like wires. You connect them to the base. The base understands everything connected to it and will uh, update the connection. You can, if you ever turn on debug mode, which I doubt anybody ever does, uh, it'll tell you how many parts are connected. Uh, it'll show you where the base is. Uh, you can connect these to check logic. Um, but you build the base here. So I'm going to build a version here. Now, as I said, the shape literally doesn't matter. You can build ex exotic shapes and it will still function perfectly fine. Uh, it uses a pathfinder to find all of this thing. It's a little laggy. I'm working on uh, optimizing it. it. Right now it only takes out about 100 microseconds, which is 10% of a millisecond, which is like 0.05% of a tick. Uh, it, I consider it high. You guys probably wouldn't even notice. As long as people don't uh, build too many of these, you'll be fine. Now I said you can build this dynamic so you can make it look however you want. As you notice, it'll do multiple pikes. Now the uh, connection logic in a few spots is still borked. As I said, it's, it, it, it needs more work. But you can sit here and connect piece after piece after piece. Um, eventually these will uh, update. They're on an eight second update timer. So every eight seconds they'll update their connection logic. I am working on optimizing that a little bit so it, it'll understand a little faster uh, its connection. The modeler is also working on fixing this gap right here. Uh, but that should be done before the update here Saturday. But yeah, you see you can build it. So we got a connection here. Now, it takes a little bit of time to actually update the network, and I forgot to place this part. So as soon as this places, uh, after a second and a half, it'll start scanning the network. And it'll do the scan. Uh, let me pull up my console over here if I can find it actually. Uh, you can see I go and lose everything. Multiple windows. Uh, but we're, I think we're in debug mode. No, we're not in debug mode. I think we're in run only mode. So we gotta go find this console. Here we go. As you can see, so it'll run a scan. Scan takes roughly 100 microseconds. It, it varies, it'll go all the way up to 200 sometimes. It really depends on how fast your uh, world is running. Uh, I've got background processes going, so of course I'm going to have some latency going on here. But it'll run in a decent amount of time, and it'll tick this every single time. So you can see it rescanned the structure here. Uh, it must have did a network merge. But it'll connect here, and I can actually click this, and it'll go, hey, I've got 51 parts attached. I don't have debug output for the size of it yet, but it does work. Now, since it's a little boring just looking at an antenna, I actually coded up another mod here I'll be working on. 
uh, ignore the missing texture block. I haven't implemented a model yet. Uh, I'm going to be using one of the models offered by Morton as a replacement for the FOF stations for this. But what you can do is it's a just a blank GUI. I'm going to get a really nice GUI for this. The plan is to make this GUI look exactly like this. Uh, I like Kex chat. I like my look, my dark theme on the back of it. So I'm going to make this chat block look the same. And the ideal is literally the same as IRC client. You can use this block to communicate with any player within radio range. And what you can do is type into this GUI. Let's say sub. Uh, hit the send button. It'll update here with that. And if I walk over here, and hopefully nothing breaks, it's on here. Now if I type in this side, uh, let's say nothing much. Now of course it's going to show my same player name. In theory, I haven't tested it on multiplayer yet. The name will change because the code basically is that coded that way. But it shows up on both sides. And now this will keep 30 chat messages. It only renders 13 at a time. It'll render all the way down. So if I just type, start typing numbers in, um, I'm going to work on improving this uh, a little bit. So you can hit the enter key. Uh, I'm going to add chat clearing. It'll also be able to send hidden messages, uh, various other things. I'm even thinking about doing uh, music streaming through the antenna on the mo on this other mod I'm working on. But to see, it'll show this. Actually, it looks like yeah, this renders nine. I, I guess I was mistaken. But it pushed the next comment out, and I'll show it again. It'll push the next comment out. Yeah, see, source nine. So to store 30 chat message and only render nine. I'm gonna work on optimizing this. I'm also gonna try to put a bar going down the middle here to divide the player names and make sure that this auto adjusts with the length of people's player names or trim. I, most likely I may go for the trim option because it'll look nicer. But as you can tell, it updates on both sides. Now this will work for anything. So, it's, so right now I've only got two antennas here and there's no special logic here. What this does is when you send a message, it calls this antenna, it sends it, pops it off to a radio grid, which then goes, okay, get me all the radio grids within range. It'll then send it to this antenna and this antenna. When these two antennas receive it, this base then decodes the message and then scans all around it looking for uh, receivers. Now if I open this up, see there's no chat messages here, but if I type in, let's say 4Fs, send, these two actually got the message. But this doesn't have a log. Now I'm going to try to timestamp these so that you understand that there is no chat messages between here. Um, that way at least you're not confused if you pop in here and there's conversations going off. It'll say, hey, you have no chat messages before this time. Um, because there's no... I'm not going to store any chat messages in a global poll for these to pick up on. So if this ever gets unchunk loaded, you've got no chat messages. Because this is this is acts as a very simple radio receiver. If you ever played with a walkie-talkie as a kid, you know when you're within range, you can hear each other. When you're out of range, you can't. Chunk unloading counts as being out of range. But that's pretty much all I have to show you. Now the plan for this radio system is I'm going to have a block that will replace these. You'll connect all your silos to a block. That will then connect to another block, which then will actually connect to this, and then that block will sit next to the antenna. Or I'll, I'm really thinking about making a wire system so you could move and then connect your block, say, like over here. Uh, let's do redstone just to show this. I may actually just copy the redstone code. It just will save myself so much effort. Although I have to do tile and do logic to actually connect these two because redstone is metadata based. It's simple. It's only got 16 connection states. So actually, I think it's a little less since it's only got... Ah, let's not do the math. I'll hurt my head. Um, but the theory would be is that you'd build an antenna and you could build it like anywhere. It doesn't really matter as long as you, you get your range you're looking for. Then you would connect it over, then connect it to a block, and then you would connect this block over to your controller. This controller would be connected to as many silos as you want. Then it would pull the information from this, pass it to this. This would then collect all the information and then you would have another block that you would connect and you would click this one and you would open up your controller GUI, which would look something like this, but much more organized. So you would have subfolders. We would say, have a folder called Missile Launcher Bay East, Missile Launcher Bay West. You'd click that, then you would scroll down through and you would see like hundreds of launchers. And this would show you, in theory, because of this would be connected to your radio network, this would be connected to as many silo networks as possible that you would have under your control. Now the, the networks will be 
uh, named like a Wi-Fi, so you would name it, say, uh, Papa Smith's Nuclear Arsenal. And then you would put a passkey on it. And then only networks with the same name and passkey will connect to each other. Uh, in theory, the name would act as a frequency. Um, and they won't interfere with each other. I thought about adding interference and everything, and the thought process resulted in me just saying, nah, it's just it's not worth it. It will be too complex to the player. I may look into it as a, in the future as an optional config that server owners can flip on, but not right now. But you would connect it all, you'd pull information from this, so you'd have a central controller that would control all your silos for one base. And then this would connect to as many of these as possible, and then you could have as many display units as possible. I'm also going to do radar maps, um, more command center controls, because in theory what this block would be, uh, which I'm representing with this, is that you would have a central command center network core. And then that would connect to everything, connect to your data servers, your computer craft logic uh, tables, your open computer logic uh, controllers, uh, your silo launchers, your remote uplinks, your security consoles, everything. Yeah, but that's um, that's planned for the future. Now, this week, Saturday, the plan is to release a stable update. Um, that update will contain everything in the current test version. The antenna system, remote launch system, I'm hoping to have the warhead crafting system done, but something tells me since I only have like three days left, I'm not going to get to it. There's just too much work on the table. But the plan would be to actually get it done, and the warhead crafting table would essentially allow you to craft these warheads, not in a normal crafting grid, but is a, a much more refined system. Because right now, if I can actually pull one of these out, I don't remember if I have any I support. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. So right now you craft one of these, and yeah, I don't have any I support. Uh, then you would combine it in the crafting table with one of these fine things. And the textures are shit. I'm going to replace them here later. But you would co you would combine it with this to get that. Now the plan is to have the crafting table where you would insert the empty warhead. You would then insert into another slot your charge, your timer fuse, your fuse detonator so this way you can adjust how your fuse starts and how long the fuse takes to set off so you can have an impact missile that is set to impact then has a five second fuse then detonates or then just forget the fuse and just have it instantly detonate you can have a range based detonator for air burst um, gps detonator so as soon as it gets within an xyz position it just goes off so you don't even have to worry about what it hits um, you have a variety of different ones. Like you could have one that hits the ground and then is remote detonated. So you could like launch these missiles in the base and then somebody's like, what? They didn't go off. And then you walk through the front door and then detonate all the base, all the missiles. Um, there's plans for a lot of different changes, but the warhead crafting table is in theory going to allow huge amounts of customization for everything. Um, but seeing as I'm running out of time on this video, I'll save that for another day to explain.